As always, this is narrative bonus content, so if that's not your cup of tea, feel free to skip on back to the story. Otherwise, stay tuned. Now, take care with those steps there, sir. Uh, Madam, they're slipperier than you think. (laughs) Worn smooth by the fire, don't you know? Oh, no, 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 they're not going to fall through. For all that they are cracked and blackened, the flames set them together harder than any mortar could. Let me give you a hand there, young miss. Uh, Up we go! (sighs) There. Now, do take care around the edges, stick to the walkway, and you can get a good look of the surviving arches and an excellent view of the coast, all the way across the Viridian Bay on a clear day. Take a moment to breathe in that fresh sea air and the history. <laughs> breathe deep, and you may yet smell the faint hint of the last ashes of Alderai Blackheart. At least, that is what they say. <laughs> Sasha, the hamper! Now, if you would care to make yourselves comfortable, ladies and gentlemen, why don't we crack open a little of the beer, provided graciously by the Burning Man Tavern for your picnic this day. Uh, Try the pies, they go very well with the chutney. A halfling made, you know? Hmm? Oh, no, the the pies and chutney both. (laughs) Ha <laughs> I see what you mean. No, the pies are pork, not halfling. Very droll, sir, have not heard that one before. And now then, young miss, how much do you know about Alderai? Oh, yes, he was a very bad man. In fact, he was the worst kind of man. He was a sorcerer. Never has there been a sorcerer born who did not go bad. It is well known here in Midmere. Well, uh, yes, there was Petra Leon, but he received a blessing from the regent, so that is okay. But other than him, yes, sorcerers are vile creatures to the very end, and Alderai was the worst of the worst. Where did he come from? The very pits of damnation. (laughs) But wherever his black soul was spawned, it is known that he was born the bastard son of a baroness on the eastern coast of Meadmere, back when the Tsaros ruled over only the western coast and plains. In those days, the barons all ruled without the Tsar, perhaps allying one to another and even joining together under petty kings, but with no clear ruler. The great forest of Meadmere prevented the Tsar from sending his armies to put those lands in order, while the hills and rivers kept these wild barons safe from conquest by Brighthall or the Orcs. It was Alexa Androva's ambition that struck the first note of doom for Meadmere. When she gave birth to Alderai, it is said that as a woman of learning she saw the birthmark that marks all sorcerers, and recognized it for what it was, but rather than dash his brains against the rocks as a good woman should, she was too greedy for power, and thought she could control her son. May she burn in the gaze of the regent for a thousand years! Alexa raised her son with an indulgence she did not extend even to her rightful heir, her daughter Katarina. Both son and daughter were known to be bitter rivals, Alderai seeking to usurp his sister's rightful position from the earliest age. They struggled in all things, with Katarina's skill and natural talent thwarted at every turn by Alderai's foul magic. At last, when Katharina reached her 16th birthday and could have ascended and taken her mother's position, Alderai used his powers to twist his mother's mind, forcing her to banish her true-born daughter and taking the position of heir for himself. It is said that not a week later, recovered from his mind control, she died of a broken heart for the treachery she had committed. Demons rose up from the ground and dragged her soul into the fires of the regent's wrath for her perfidy, while Alderai laughed all the while. Alderai falsely took his mother's family name, and as Baron Androva he worked his charms to sway the weak-minded barons about him. Many fell under his spell, pledging their oaths of loyalty to him with mouths that were not their own. Those that did not, 
Alderai slew by cursed magic, sending terrible creatures in the night to strangle them in their beds. The worst of his enemies he cursed to deaths beyond death, raising their slain bodies as walking corpses for his army, or grinding their souls into the black shadows that were the vanguard of his legion. Alderai was a tyrant that brooked no opposition. When other barons began to see what was happening, with more and more bewitched lords kneeling to their sorcerer king, they banded together to try and stop him. Some Alderai deceived, inviting them to come and speak to him, and then bewitching them with an enchanted gaze to join his service. Others were smarter than this, and sent armies rather than diplomats. To those barons Alderai sent death, armies of ravenous corpses that stripped the land of life, uncontrolled and possessed by the spirits of the angry dead. When his armies could not breach the walls of his foes, he struck them with plagues of shadow that would grow and grow until they drained the life from everything in the town and then burned the remainder as a warning to others. In this way, Alderai acquired the name Blackheart, and in this way he brought all of Eastern Meadmere under his rule as a witch king. Rather than sending his army south to plague the fools in Brighthall or create more dead orcs in the world, never a bad thing, yes? He did the unexpected wicked thing, as sorcerers ever do. He made secret pacts with the elves of the Great Forest, sacrificing thousands of his own people as offerings to those bloodthirsty cannibals for safe passage for his armies. The twisted creatures of the forest agreed to share the knowledge of safe paths through the uncrossable woods, allowing him to march his troops into the undefended heartlands of Meadmere. The fighting was fierce and bloody, and Alderai destroyed more and more towns with his shadow plagues, forcing serfs and barons alike to bend the knee or join his legion of the damned. All seemed lost, with the Tsar's own army pushed back again and again, even as far as the capital, until heroes arrived. The story tells that three wanderers, seeming vagrants and swords, revealed themselves in the siege of the capital to be none other than holy knights of the church sent to drive a dagger into the heart of Alderai's plans. They won victory after victory upon the walls, slaying Alderai's bewitched commanders and, so they say, even seeming to kill Alderai himself. His army broke and retreated, the day seeming won. Yet Alderai was too crafty to die. He rose again a week later, bringing together the pieces of his army that had broken to strike again. This week of death had given the Tsar time to levy fresh troops, however, and hunt down many of Alderai's soldiers, forcing him onto the back foot. He retreated, only to find the Tsar's troops had cut off the secret paths in through the great forest. It seemed he was doomed, but Alderai knew that there was no man he could not twist to his ends if he could but get close enough to look into their eyes. He instead drove south with his armies to the nearest port, where he hoped to bewitch the captains of a number of ships to carry him and his army back to eastern Meadmere to renew their forces. It was at this fort, this very fort, that Alderai met his match in the stubborn tenaciousness of Werrick, the steward of the town. Werrick levied the men and women of the port to fight, staging resistance in this very fort, holding out against the armies of the damned. The holy knights had already destroyed the last of the shadows at Alderai's command, and wrecked his trebuchets and cannon, so he was forced to try and take the fort by manpower alone. Werrick and his fighters held out against Alderai for two whole weeks, launching raids to burn any ship the Blackheart had tried to sail, a symbol of defiance Alderai could not help but rail against. 
On the last day of those two weeks, the outer bailey had fallen. Yes, that one just there, as had the inner walls that you can see just below us here. The fighting had fallen back to this very building, the keep, and all of Alderai's army was pressed into the castle, trying to slaughter their way through the last heroic defenders at the gates. Then, at long last, help came. Not an army, barely more than a thousand troops, an elite honor guard of knights from the church. Against the twenty thousand of Alderai's army, they could have done little alone, but the one they escorted would prove his doom. The Holy Mother herself had ridden forth from Tyre to put an end to his evil ways, and by her side rode none other than Katarina Androva, Alderai's half-sister, and the Holy Mother's Knight Commander. It is said that when the Holy Mother began to pray to the Regent, calling upon them to bring judgment upon Alderai for his cruelty and ambition, her words rang like the clanging of bells in the ears of the dead soldiers in his army, striking them to the ground where they stood. Alderai himself tried to flee in the form of a giant bat, fearing the regent's judgment, but in his final act of sacrifice, Warwick took hold of the black heart and held him in place to receive his punishment. All who saw it would remember that day for the rest of their lives. The skies parted, and a column of holy fire descended from the regent, immolating every soldier in Alderai's cruel army, annihilating the sorcerer himself at the cost of every remaining defender of the fort. The fire burned for a full hour, and when it passed, nothing remained except the stones of the castle, melted together as hard as true hewn stone from the earth itself. At last, the cruelty of Alderai Blackheart was purged from the world. Oh, praise the regent! <laughs> yes, indeed, it is a good story. All true, I swear. Oh, oh, why, yes, tips are very welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you especially, good sir. Very generous, yes. And that, young miss, is why on Alder's Night we burn the straw alders, yes? Ah, but I know what you really want out of Alder's Night. The honey apples. <laughs> well, if you would care to make your way down the stairs again, Sasha will have a selection of honeyed apples for you to purchase at very reasonable prices. Sasha, get the apples! <laughs>